to your chairperson today. Good morning. Uh, my name is Miriam Amarsadegi. I am so very happy to be with you and already so proud of you for being here and prepared, ready to go. Uh, I participated in We the People the first year it was offered on the bicentennial of the U.S. Constitution. Um, I love this material. I absolutely adore Unit 1, especially. Uh, I was born in Iran and came to the U.S. when I was seven during the Iranian Revolution. And over the last 10 years or so, I have um, led efforts to adapt and translate the center's materials so that people inside Iran can learn them and teach them to other people. We use uh, uh, techniques and tools like Zoom here and social media, and that's me. Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Christopher Riano. I'm a professor of constitutional law and government at Columbia University, and I also am assistant counsel to the governor for the state of New York. Hello, everyone. My name is Darcy Kern. I'm a professor of history at Southern Connecticut State University. And like Miriam, I am a, an alumna of the program. So it's, it's a great program. We're excited to see you, and we're looking forward to hearing what you say. Could you all please introduce yourselves? Good morning, I'm Katie Hall. Good, Good afternoon, I'm Cameron. Good morning, I'm sorry, Good morning. Deb. Good morning, I'm Piper Mackey. And uh, we represent Unit 1 from Miss Megan Boyman Henney's class of the Great Commonwealth of Kentucky. Fantastic. OK, I'm going to read the question, and then we're going to get started. Unit one, what are the philosophical and historical foundations of the American political system? Aristotle asserts in politics that it is not the form of government ruled by the one, the few, or the many that matters most, but rather the ends of government that are most important. Where in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution did the framers set forth the ends of government? How did the framers differ, if at all, about how the ends of government should be prioritized? Which of the ends of government set forth in the Declaration and Constitution appear to have the highest priority today? Please begin. Thomas Hutchinson wrote in 1776, the end of government is the happiness of every individual so far as is consistent with the good of the whole. The ends presented in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution can be divided into two categories. The happiness of every individual, also known as individual liberties, and the good of the whole, otherwise known as the common good. The preamble of the Constitution presents ends in order to promote the common good. It states the new government shall ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, and promote the general welfare. James Madison in Federalist 10 asserted that in order to ensure the protection of the common good, factions cannot rule in self-interest. This protection can best be exemplified in the impeachment trials of Andrew Johnson, as seven radical Republicans voted against his removal from office. Senator James Grimes wrote, I cannot agree to destroy the harmonious working of the Constitution for the sake of getting rid of an unacceptable president. Scholar Carol Brogan writes that a key goal of nationalists such as Hamilton and Madison was the right of national legislature to veto any state law, making the Constitution the supreme law of the land, which is established in Article 6, Section 2, allowed the necessary power to the federal government to secure the framers' desired ends regarding the common good. Yet men such as John Dickinson feared seeing the equality of, equality of states sent to the oblivion of the Constitution. These men believed that such a large government would trample the smaller, weaker state governments. They also believed that the rights of individuals would therefore be unprotected, create a government ruling in some interest. In Aristotle's politics, he states, none of the principles on which men claim to rule and to hold all other men in subjection to them are strictly right. It is for this reason, that the framers intended to find a form that could best secure the common good and individual rights. On July 4, 1776, the Second Continental Congress pronounced that all men are created equal with unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Influenced by John Locke's notions of natural rights and the social contract theory, the founders believed that their fundamental rights were being infringed upon by the British government. The colonists grieved that in the Declaration of Independence, the justice system was corrupt as the king controlled the tenures of the judges. In 1761, the king forbade the New York legislator from reestablishing a secured holding in office. The framers declared individual liberties as another end of government, writing in the preamble that the new government shall establish justice and secure the blessings of liberty. 
Through a system of separation of powers, the framers effectively separated the executive from the judicial. As stated in Article 3, Section 1, Clause 2, compensa compensation of, ju for, of judges during good behavior should not be diminished during the continuance in office. This then allows for decisions that protect the Constitution from other branches without fear of being dismissed. As a panel, we argue that natural rights have been adapted as the most prioritized ends today. In the Second Amendment, it gives people the right to keep and bear arms. However, the interpretation and regulation of what should be considered arms leads to polarizing debates between political parties. In a, in a 2017 Gallup poll, it states that 61% of U.S. registered voters say gun control is one of many factors, and 24% say it is the only factor in choosing the candidate they vote for. The common good was an end that the framers intended to keep as the highest priority, but has proven to be extremely difficult to uphold due to political po polarization that our nation faces today. In prevailing events, debates emerge over the actions taken by the government against COVID-19. Protesters claim that individual freedoms are being restrained and seek a reopening of the economy. While the framers placed common good over the individual liberties of the people, it was the utmost importance that both were protected. Great effort was put in creating a form that effectively did so. For this reason, it appears that established ends cannot be pursued without an effective form. Therefore, the form and the ends are interdependent on each other. If one is to falter, the other surely will too. Thank you. We are now ready for your questions. Very good. Even before this COVID crisis, um, could you speak to how we as a country, as a union, were having uh, problems perhaps in coming to consensus, unity, on the ends of government. Uh, speak to the role of media, social media, our political climate, culture. Is this a problem as you see it? Um, definitely, especially with political polarization, polarization like we stated in our opening. Um, with the uh, two-party system, we have a really hard time coming up with bills or passing bills in our legislative branch. Um, and uh, yeah, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, to support Katie, what she's saying is the 117th Congress has passed less than 1% of uh, the bills that have come through uh, the end at, at this time, which is a significant decrease from the past couple of years, which we've seen around 3 to 4%. Um, we obviously have two different majorities in, in uh, the House Representative and, and the Senate. But it's, it's been extremely difficult to find any sort of collaboration between the branches. When you look at the executive and, and you look at uh, a great example of that was Nancy Pelosi uh, tearing up President, President Trump's speech after his uh, speech. And, and it just kind of represents the, the volatile nature between the two uh, parties at the moment. So would you argue, I was gonna say, so would you argue then that good government has changed over time, that definition has changed over time? Because it, it sounds like we've had this historical conversation, but now in this contemporary way, is there a different way of looking at good government? Does that definition change? Has it changed? I'm, I'm sorry, are you speaking in terms of because of, of the polarization, good government has changed? Are you, are you in whichever it? In whichever way you, you see. I think in some ways you can think of it from polarization, but obviously from a philosophical standpoint, you know, uh, the practicalities make a difference. I think ultimately our ends of government have stayed the same, especially because we still see um, advocacy for individual rights, um, like the founders did because of the British monarchy. But um, I think the way we change our government to help um, su support those indiv individual rights has changed over time a bit, um, especially with political polarization. We see like a decrease in voting participation and. Um, <laughs> to kind of chime in on that, I, I, I would say that we still see a, a significant emphasis on the idea that, that a form of government is, is extremely important as we have since the founders first created it. I mean, as early as, I mean, 50 years ago, we, we were battling communism throughout the world in this, in this separate form that we did not believe secured the ends. Um, and, and I still believe in it today, we still do have the same, the same thing. It's still at this point may have issues because, and that may just be a temporary thing because we have two different um, 
political parties in in the House and in the Senate. And we do see issues with polarization, but that could be simply just due to to a uh, possibly a, a kind of volatile executive. Um, it, it's hard to say now without seeing in the future how the polarization will continue and what will happen in the future with this current situation. I'm curious if you could speak to this idea of, because you're talking a lot about polarization at the national level, um, but you also, you also mentioned in your statement that the federal government ensures the common good. Um, and one of the debates we're seeing right now is about federalism. So you have the, the, you know, the horizontal at the federal level, but you also have the vertical at the federal and the state level. Um, so I wonder if you could talk about how federalism and the states ensure the common good. I think a great example to look at is really in the in light of current events like COVID-19, you see um, state executive power getting and kind of um, increasing at the level of uh, making guidelines and um, following CDC guidelines about staying home and encouraging social distancing. But um, even as far as state power goes in that aspect, there hasn't been, a, there's um, no constitutional protection behind uh, legally forcing residents to stay home. It's just um, the farthest states can really go is just um, and encourage it. So I think that's one way you see it, especially today in modern times. Uh, this can be seen through the mayor of San Francisco as he mandated that the residents wear a face mask. And this is also unprotected. This is protected by the 10th Amendment, which gives rights to the states that are not mentioned in the Constitution. To chime in, also Federalist Paper 9, uh, they write that the, the states are able to check if the executive were to lend its powers specifically to one state over the others. And, and this confederation of states, I mean, this federalism allows each state to be able to check that and they would end up kind of uh, getting angry, getting getting enraged by the fact that the, the president was choosing or the executive was choosing to support one over the other. So it's a check in itself. Okay, Are you, how about these checks and balances today? Can you say more about how we may be using them as well or not as well? Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. All right, um, you guys have a lot to be proud of. Um, I think you worked well together as a team. You covered for each other, you filled gaps, you expanded upon each other's points. I think that was a positive. Um, I uh, enjoyed the point about communism and uh, a, a perspective that went back in time, but also across, across space and other political systems. Um, it's easy to take for granted uh, what we have because of the partisanship, gridlock, polar, polarization and all of that. But when you consider the alternatives, it's sort of, a, as Churchill said, it's the worst form of government barring all other kinds. So uh, I think you guys did well. You were clearly prepared and you have a lot to be proud of. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think in many ways, you know, we're all in this new little world of Zoom, right? And we're all learning Zoom all the time. And uh, I think, you know, what you were able to do together was really extraordinary. You worked well together. You jumped in as you guys needed to and you answered really hard questions. And the reason we gave you hard questions is we knew you could handle the hard questions. Um, I thought you guys had good examples, good reasoning. Um, and I was very impressed, especially since the question itself is, in, is hard enough and it's in the unit that sometimes can seem somewhat as one of the hardest units. Um, so you should be very proud. I know you've worked really hard, you did very well. I thought this was excellent. You guys, you worked well together. You all spoke, you all gave examples. Sawyer, you even asked for clarification on a question and I think that's very good. Um, and to be honest, your opening was the most Aristotelian opening that we've seen. Um, and I thought it was very interesting how you said that the form and the ends are dependent on each other. I think Aristotle and Cicero would both make that argument that a mixed government is the only one that can best protect um, liberty and natural rights. Uh, 
uh, or the happiness of the people or justice, whichever end of government you want. So I thought that was very good as far as the question went. And, you know, overall, I just, I thought you guys did a very good job. So congratulations.